form is the key to unlocking more distance and better accuracy in disc golf. And that's why on today's episode of the Chain Clinkers Disc Golf Podcast, I am dropping you our top six things you must be doing correctly in your disc golf form if you want to achieve better accuracy, more distance. Let's get into it right now. Welcome in, everybody, to the Chain Clinkers Disc Golf Podcast presented by Upper Park. And are you tired of lugging around your disc golf discs in a flimsy, uncomfortable bag? Upgrade your gear with Upper Park Disc Golf Bags, the ultimate companion for disc golf enthusiasts. Upper Park Disc Golf Bags are the pinnacle of quality, functionality, and style. These bags are designed by disc golfers for disc golfers, ensuring that every detail is tailored to enhance your playing experience. Imagine hitting the course with a bag that offers unparalleled comfort and support. Upper Park Disc Golf Bags feature ergonomic straps and padding, distributing the weight of your discs evenly across your shoulders and back. No more strain or discomfort during those long rounds. With a multitude of storage options, these bags keep your discs organized and easily accessible. The innovative compartment design allows you to carry a wide range of discs, snacks, drinks, and accessories all within arm's reach. Plus, the durable construction and reinforced stitching ensure that your bag can withstand the rigors of any course. But it's not just about functionality. Upper Park Disc Golf bags are stylish too. With sleek designs and vibrant colors, you'll turn heads on the course while representing your passion for the sport. Don't settle for subpar gear. Step up your game with Upper Park Disc Golf bags and experience the difference for yourself. Use promo code CLANKERS10 at checkout today to save yourself 10% on your next order from Upper Park and elevate your game. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fantastic episode for you today. Like I said in the intro, we are going to be talking about disc golf form. You have to get these six things correct. And to be honest, there's actually nine things, but I'm going to save the last three for the bonus Patreon podcast. So even more reason to join us over on Patreon. If you want to get the full list of nine, head over there. But we've got the top six things you must be doing correctly in your form if you want to unlock more accuracy and increased distance. Let's jump into this thing with number one. The first thing that you have to be getting correctly is grip. Start by establishing a power grip. The most common grip is the power grip, where you wrap your fingers around the rim of the disc and place your thumb on top. Experiment with different grip styles and find the one that feels comfortable and secure for you. The power grip is the most common grip in disc golf. It's what you're going to see a lot of the pro players throw as well as you're going to see a lot of the players just on your course every day are going to be throwing the power grip. And a lot of people just throw out, yeah, just use a power grip. Yeah, just put all your fingers on the disc and absolutely rip it. That that doesn't really help disc golfers, I don't think, when we just use it in those generic terms. So let's kind of break down how to execute the proper power grip. The first thing you're going to want to do is place your thumb on top of the disc, positioned slightly towards the flight plate. The thumb should be pressing firmly against the disc for control. And this is actually a good plug. I'm going to put a disc in my hand and kind of show you this. So if you're not watching on YouTube, you can head over there at Chain Clinkers Disc Golf and watch. Or maybe I'll put a TikTok out or something like that. And uh, if you're not following us on TikTok, you should do so. Chain Clinkers Disc Golf. I updated it to match to Instagram. Instagram, honestly, guys, is annoying the absolute living crap out of me um making reels is so unbelievably challenging on there now compared to what it was three months ago so i feel myself making more content on tiktok and then bringing it over to instagram so hopefully that doesn't make you mad but anyways let me grab a disc let me show you what i'm talking about so that that first one that it's saying you want to place your thumb on top of the disc so you want to be thumb on top of the disc kind of towards the rim okay you want to then align your four fingers underneath the disc, wrapping them around the rim with the pads of your fingers making contact with the rim, creating that firm grip. So the pads of your fingers, OK, 
Okay, you're taking those and you are wrapping it around and it's touching the disc, right? It's touching the rim of the disc. You still have your thumb up top. The third thing is you position your fingers with the index closest to the rim and the pinky the furthest from the rim. This arrangement provides stability and control. The fourth is you keep your grip firm and avoid excess tension. It's important to maintain a balance between a secure grip and allowing a fluid release. If you're just absolutely holding onto this for dear life, you might yank it and you might throw it uh, way far to the right and that you don't want to. But you also don't want to be so loosey-goosey that it falls out of your hand during your drive. So you just need to get that, feel comfortable with this, and then just kind of start to feel, you know, what is the correct tension for you? How hard should you be squeezing? Should it be coming natural? Those kinds of things. The power grip allows for a range of motion during your throw, utilizing the strength and stability of your fingers, hand, and wrist. It provides optimal control and power transfer, enabling you to generate more distance and accuracy. That being said, it's important to note that grip preference can be ver can vary among individual players. Some players may modify their grip slightly based on their hand size, finger strength, and personal comfort. It's worth experimenting with different grips to find the one that works for you. Ultimately, the grip that allows you to maintain control generate power and release the disc cleanly will be the most effective for your game so maybe you don't like having all four fingers on there drop the pinky off and just go with the three finger power grip i think that's very comfortable when i put the pinky on there sometimes it's a little hard so sometimes i go to the three finger power grip um you know you just need to test it out in the field do so and find out what works for you but like I said at the top of this list the the number one thing to improving your form in disc golf it, it all starts with your grip you have to have the proper grip and I believe that the proper grip or the best grip if you want better accuracy and distance and consistency is going to be the power grip let's get into the second tip to improve your form in disc golf it is stance and footwork. Your stance and footwork play a significant role in generating power and maintaining balance during the throw. You should position your feet shoulder width apart with your throwing side foot slightly forward. Experiment with different foot positions to find what works best for your throwing style. As you throw, transfer your weight from your back foot to your front foot to maximize power. So you really want to make sure that you have that proper footwork and that you're comfortable with what you're doing if you want to be generating power. Proper footwork in disc golf, like I said, is essential for generating power, maintaining balance, and executing accurate throws. Here are some of the key elements of proper footwork. So I've got six things that are going to be key to having good footwork. The first one is a staggered stance. Begin with a staggered stance when your throwing side foot is slightly forward compared to your non-throwing side foot. This positioning allows for smooth weight transfer and a clear throwing path. And that just makes sense because if you're thinking about a baseball player, they are going to have that front foot in front of that back foot so that way they can generate more power with the hips. The second thing is alignment. Align your feet and shoulders perpendicular to the target line. This alignment helps promote a natural and efficient throwing motion. Three, weight shift. As you initiate your throw, shift your weight from your back foot to your front foot. This weight transfer helps generate power and adds momentum to your throw. The fourth aspect of having good footwork is timing. Coordinate your footwork with your throwing motion. As you reach back with the disc, begin to transfer your weight forward. The weight shift should be synchronized with the pull through and release of the disc. Five, you're gonna pivot. As you transfer your weight forward, pivot on your back foot or your plant foot to allow your body to rotate smoothly. The pivot should be a fluid motion that adds rotational power to your throw. And the final thing is follow through. After releasing the disc, allow your body to continue its natural motion. Your throwing arm should finish high and across your body, while your weight shifts onto your front foot. 
The follow-through helps with balance and allows for maximum power transfer. It's important to note that footwork can vary slightly depending on the type of throw, whether it's a drive, approach, or a putt, and individual throwing styles as well. Experiment with different footwork techniques and find what works best for you. You can watch some of our videos on TikTok and Instagram, or you can watch experienced pros and see how they throw to also see some visual examples of proper footwork in action. Remember that practicing proper footwork is essential, but it takes time and repetition to develop muscle memory and coordination. Incorporate footwork drills into your practice routine and focus on maintaining balance, timing, and a smooth weight transfer. With consistent pra practice, you'll be able to refine your footwork and improve your overall throwing technique in disc golf. And this is one of those things that if you need a little bit of time and extra attention on it, take that, absolutely, and m make sure that you're understanding and are comfortable with what your feet are doing. If you have to go from a standstill, go from a standstill. If you're ready to incorporate that X step, do it. But just make sure that you are analyzing your throws, filming yourself, and you're able to uh, compare that to proper footwork and see if your footwork is matching that. So the third thing that you must get correct if you want to improve your disc golf form is the reach back. During the backswing, aim to bring the disc back on a straight line parallel to the target. Avoid excessive rounding or dipping of the disc during the reach back. Focus on smooth and controlled motion, keeping your arm and wrist loose. This reach back is incredibly important, guys. And the thing about the reach back is that a proper reach back in disc golf is always going to look good. You're never going to have it, and then you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that looked bad. Maybe not every throw is going to be great, but you know that it is going to not be rounding because you're not you know, crossing it over your back and and the disc can no longer see the target, and all these different things that we've talked about in past podcasts. So I'll give you some tips here on, um, or you know, some key aspects of a proper reach back. I've got uh, six more key things uh, for a proper reach back. So the first one is straight line path. During the reach back, aim to bring the disc back on a straight line parallel to the target. Avoid that excessive rounding or dipping. Keeping the disc on a straight line is going to tremendously help with your consistency and accuracy. It's just not a line. If someone put a string there, you should stay on that string the entire time. The second aspect is controlled in smooth motion. The reach back should be controlled and smooth, allowing for gradual acceleration throughout the motion. Avoid jerky or rushed movements. Start the reach back slowly and gradually increase the speed as you transition into the forward throw. Third aspect is full arm extension. Extend your arm fully during the reach back, ensuring that it is straight and parallel to the ground. This extension maximizes the potential distance and power you can generate during the throw. The fourth aspect is proper disc orientation. Keep the disc flat or slightly angled downward during the reach back. This position sets up the disc for an optimal release angle during the forward throw. Five is timing with footwork. We've already talked about footwork a little bit, but you want to coordinate your reach back with your foot footwork and weight shift. As you initiate the reach back, begin to transfer your weight forward, ensuring that the timing is synchronized with the pull through and release the disc. The final aspect to remember about this reach back is make sure you have a balanced stance. Maintaining a balanced stance during the reach back, your weight should be distributed evenly, allowing for a smooth transition into the forward throw. It's important to note that the reach back can vary slightly depending on individual throwing styles and preferences. However, the overarching principles of a straight line path, controlled motion, full arm extension, and proper timing remain constant. To refine your reach back, practice in slow motion, focusing on each component and ensuring a fluid, repeatable motion. Recording your throws and analyzing them can continue to also provide valuable feedback on your reach back. 
Remember that each reach back is just one part of the overall throwing motion. Proper footwork and grip, and we're going to talk about some more, are also crucial aspects to consider. Working on all of these elements together will help you to develop into a more effective and consistent throwing motion in disc golf. Back to the top, we've done three already. So we have talked about grip, stance and footwork, and reach back are the first three things that you must be doing correctly to improve your form in disc golf. And let me know if you're liking these style of videos, guys, of these podcasts where we kind of have six overarching principles that we're talking about and then we're breaking them down into more steps in each one of them let me know if you guys like that or if you don't like that um, I think it's kind of helpful to you know talk about the initial subject and then break it down some more so let me know if you agree with that you can do so TikTok Instagram uh, you can comment on this video on YouTube or on Spotify leave a answer over there let me know if you like that style or if you don't want me to have so much analysis or breakdown uh, in each overarching category. But let's get to the fourth. We're going to be talking about the pull through. As you initiate the forward throw, focus on pulling the disc in a straight line towards the target. Imagine pulling a chain attached to the disc center with a straight line motion. The straight line pull helps maintain accuracy and consistency. And again, when you want a the pull through, as it is, it's such a critical component of the disc golf throwing motion that follows the reach back. The reach back and pull through, honestly, are two of the biggest things. I mean, all of these things are big, obviously, right? Because they're on the list. But if you you can have great footwork, but if your reach back and pull through leads to rounding, it didn't matter that you had a good grip or good footwork. If you have good reach back and follow through, you can kind of overcome a little bit of grip and bad footwork. But these two, if you get these two wrong, you are going to be struggling at disc golf for a long time. Here are some key elements to the proper pull through in disc golf. Again, we've got six. Uh, I'll give you seven here. So seven key aspects to improve your pull through and disc golf. The first one, initiate forward motion. Once you've completed the reach back, begin the forward motion by shifting your weight from the back foot to the front foot. This weight transfer helps generate power and momentum for the throw. The second, pull in a straight line. We've talked about this. The third, use your body and core. So engage your hips and core muscles to generate rotational power during the pull through. As you initiate the forward motion, rotate your hips in torso in sync with arm movement. This coordinated rotation adds power and helps generate torque for longer and more accurate throws. The fourth, accelerate gradually. So start the pull through slowly and gradually accelerate as you transition into the release. Avoid jerky or rushed movements. Cannot stress this one enough. The acceleration should be smooth and controlled, allowing for natural buildup of power. When you're jerking the disc all around or you're being rushed and tense, you're not going to have a straight line pull through. You're going to get off of your line, which is going to lead to a bad throw. The fifth key aspect is a whip-like motion. As you accelerate, imagine your arm and wrist acting like a whip. Focus on a strong and snappy wrist snap at the release point. The late snap provides an additional burst of speed and spin into the disc. The sixth, follow through. After releasing the disc, continue your arm's motion in a smooth, natural arc. Your throwing arm should finish high and across your body with your weight shifted onto your front foot. The follow through helps with balance, maximizes power transfer, and promotes a consistent release angle. Final key aspect to remember about the pull through is your practice tempo and rhythm. Pay attention to the tempo and rhythm of your fall of your pull through, excuse me. Experiment with different speeds and find a comfortable pace that allows you for to have a fluid and connected motion. Don't go too fast, but also don't go too slow. Developing that consistent tempo helps with timing and coordination. It is important to note 
that the pull through can vary slightly among players, kind of like we've talked about with everything. Everything can vary a little bit slightly among players. However, the underlying principles of the straight line pull through, the gradual acceleration, the use of body rotation, and the strong wrist snap remain constant. Those aspects you must get right if you want proper pull through. To improve your pull through, you can practice in front of a mirror or record your throws to observe your form. Analyze the timing, line, smoothness of your motion. Focus on maintaining balance, fluidity, and power transfer throughout your pull through. Remember that your pull through, again, is just one aspect of the overall throwing motion. Everything we have talked about, you need to make sure you are getting right in order to have that good form in disc golf. The spit, we are on number five, is rotation and hip engagement. This is number five of the things you must get right to improve your form in disc golf. It's all about those hips, baby. We got to get those hips moving. So rotation and hip engagement. You want to engage your hips and core muscles to generate rotational power during the throw. As your arm pulls through, initiate the rotation of your hips in sync with the arm movement. This coordinated motion adds power and helps generate torque for longer and more accurate throws. Engaging your hips effectively in the disc golf throw is crucial for that generation of power and maximizing your throwing distance. So this is the part where you really need to be paying attention if you want to improve your distance. Here are some tips that are going to help you engage your hips properly. The first is that staggered stance that we talked about earlier. Start with a staggered stance where your throwing side foot is slightly forward compared to your non-throwing side foot. This positioning allows for a better hip engagement and more efficient transfer of power. The second, initiate rotation. As you begin your throw, initiate the rotation of your hips by leading with your lower body. Start the rotation by turning your hips and torso toward the target while keeping your upper body and arm back during the reach back. The third is timing and synchronization. Coordinate the rotation of your hips with the rest of your throwing motion. As you initiate the forward motion and pull through, your hips should rotate in sync with the arm movement. This coordination allows for a fluid and connected motion. The fourth is drive from the back foot. As you shift your weight forward during the throw, push off and drive powerfully from your back foot or your plant foot. This pushing motion generates strong rotation of the hips and helps transfer energy to the throw. The fifth is core engagement. Engage your core muscles throughout the throw to enhance rotation and power generated from your hips. Focus on maintaining a stable and engaged core, which acts as a solid base for generating torque and transferring energy. The sixth and final tip is practice separation drills. Separation drills can help you develop the ability to separate your upper and lower body, enhancing hip engagement. One common drill involves throwing with only your lower body isolating the hip rotation while keeping your arms stationary. This drill promotes the proper timing and coordination of hip engagement. Remember that developing proper hip engagement takes practice and repetition. Focus on maintaining a balanced and connected motion throughout your throw, emphasizing the rotation and power generated from your hips. As you refine your, techni your technique and build strength, you'll notice increased power and distance in your disc golf throws. Before we get to the final tip on today's episode, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. All right, guys, and we are back with the final tip in today's episode. If you want to improve your form in disc golf, this is the last step that you must get right for this episode. Like I said, I'm going to give the final three tips over on our Patreon, and I'm going to give you some drills over on our Patreon that you need to go do today if you want to improve your form and if you want to maximize that distance and have more accurate and consistent disc golf shots. 
If you like podcasts like this and you like improving your disc golf game, make sure you hit that subscribe button today. Don't let another episode go by that you don't learn more. You can never learn enough and you can always continue to learn more. Therefore, we think this is one of the top podcasts out there in the disc golf space to help you learn to become a better disc golfer. If you learn audibly and if you listen to podcasts on your drive to work or while you're working, you might as well be focusing and taking notes and understanding how you can become a better disc golfer because disc golf is just a little bit more fun when you are good at it. So like I said, the sixth and final tip is follow through. The proper follow through is important for maintaining balance and maximizing power. After releasing the disc, continue your arm's motion in a smooth, natural arc. Your throwing arm should finish high and across your body with your weight shifted onto that front foot. And, the, and this is so key because a lot of people think once you let go of the disc, it doesn't really matter what you do. I think follow through and following through properly plays a crucial role in maintaining balance while also maximizing power transfer and promoting a consistent release angle. Here are some key elements of a proper follow through. So we've got six or seven. The first one, extension and release. After releasing the disc, continue to extend your throwing arm fully toward the target. Aim to reach a high and extended position with your arm fully outstretched. The extension allows for a clean and complete release, promoting smooth flight path for the disc. The second, maintain balance. Throughout the follow through, focus on maintaining a balanced stance. Your weight should shift naturally onto your front foot as you complete the throw. Avoid leaning too far forward or backward as this can affect your balance and stability. The third is arm path. Follow the natural and fluid path with your throwing arm during the follow through. Your arm should move in a smooth arc across your body, finishing high and across your chest. This motion helps maintain a consistent release angle and adds to the overall momentum of the throw. The fourth is wrist snap. As you extend your arm during the follow through, incorporate a strong and snappy wrist snap. This late snap of the wrist adds extra spin to the disc, enhancing its stability and maximizing its flight potential. The more rotations you have on the disc, the further it is going to go. The fifth is full body involvement. Engage your entire body in the follow through, not just your throwing arm. Allow your hips and torso and shoulders to follow the natural path set by your arm. This involvement helps maintain a fluid and connected throwing motion while maximizing power transfer. The sixth is smooth deceleration. As you complete the follow through, allow your throwing arm to decelerate naturally. Avoid abruptly stopping or jerking your arm after the release. Gradual deceleration helps prevent unnecessary strain on your arm and promotes a smooth transition into your next throw. The final one on today's podcast is controlled finish. Finish your follow through with control and poise. Avoid collapsing or lunging forward excessively. Instead, aim for a controlled and balanced finish where your body remains stable and composed. The way I like to think about this is imagine if a cliff was on the other side of the tee pad. When you throw during your follow through, you should not be falling off the tee pad. You should be able to stop, maintain your control, and stay on that tee pad. Remember, the follow through should feel like a natural continuation of your throwing motion. It should not be forced or overly exaggerated. With practice, your follow through will become an integral part of your throwing technique, contributing to improved accuracy and distance in disc golf. Recording your throws and analyzing your follow through can be helpful in identifying any areas for improvement. Observing the angle, extension, and balance in your follow through can provide valuable feedback for refining your technique. That is going to wrap it up for today's episode of the Chain Clankers Disc Golf Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know. I can't make good content for you if you don't let me know what you like, what you want to see. 
If you're looking to improve your form in disc golf, hopefully this episode helped. But if you're still looking for those three final tips as well as some drills you must start doing today, head over to our Patreon, patreon.com backslash Chang Clankers, and tap into this week's bonus podcast. We're going to finish out this list and give you those drills that you can start doing this week. Thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode. If you enjoyed, listen to last week's episode, and you will continue to be on your path of becoming a better disc golfer. We will see you guys next week. 